Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today I've got a special treat for you guys. Observing with the ultimate wide field eyepiece, the 3 inch 100 degree 30 millimeter Explore Scientific eyepiece. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories in that account. And having said all that, let's get down to looking at this beast. Alright, and I guess we'll start with, you know, talking a little bit about the specs of the eyepiece. Uh, so again, this is a 3 inch form factor instead of, you know, most common eyepieces are either a two inch or an inch and a quarter. So that's probably the, you know, the biggest difference with this thing. Uh, the Explore Scientific eyepieces, most of them are going to be waterproof. So that's kind of nice. That doesn't mean you're going to be going swimming with this guy. But, um, you know, if you happen to have like a heavy night of dew or something like that or for cleaning it, I think that is kind of a nice feature. Uh, this guy normally does come with an eye cup, uh, you know, kind of like a rubber eye cup such as its small little, little brother. Let me show you that real quick here. So one of these built in. Uh, I took mine off and I'll kind of get you know, back to why I did that. Um, one thing that I will point out is that it is threaded. The barrel is threaded for three inch filters. Unfortunately, as far as I know, I haven't really been able to find any three inch filters. So we'll kind of, you know, touch on that. Uh, that is a little bit of a downside, you know, as far as like using light pollution filters and that type of deal. Although I will mention the way of, you know, kind of how I uh, kind of thought about getting around them. As you can see, um, the lens here on the bottom is pretty close. So um, I personally, you know, I'd kind of prefer it to be more recessed, but, you know, considering how big of an eyepiece, you know, that is, I'm sure they were trying to keep the size down as small as possible. Um, and then, you know, basically this is what we got. They do have like, you know, the, I do like Explore Scientific, especially with these really big eyepiece kind of rubber eye grip that is kind of handy to have. And, you know, having said that, let's weigh this guy up and see how much he weighs. Alrighty guys, so for the weigh-in, I've got a couple of buddies for uh, our big uh, 30 millimeter here. So I've got the only Ethos that I currently have is the 17 millimeter, which is pretty close to the 21. The 21 would be a little bit heavier though. So, 1.6 pounds for this Ethos. Uh, the Explorer Scientific 100 degree 25 millimeter. So this is the biggest, widest eye, feel, eye piece uh, that you could get in a two inch. Weighing in that 2.4 pounds, so significantly heavier. I mean, almost a pound heavier than the Ethos there, but probably be around a pound heavier than uh, the 21 millimeter if we had that here. And the 30 millimeter. Dun, dun, dun. 5.09 pounds, guys. Alrighty, guys. So now, obviously, besides the way of the eyepiece itself, um, you know, you obviously cannot use this. This is a standard 2-inch diagonal, right? I mean, it's a 3-inch eyepiece, so that will not work. So what do you need? You need a 3-inch diagonal as well. So this one is specific, this is actually custom made. This is probably the only one that exists uh, by Cyber Optics for the FS Key 106. Explore Scientific does make their own version uh, specifically, you know, basically for this eyepiece that's a three inch. Uh, but essentially, yeah, guys, I mean, check out the size difference. I mean, pretty huge, right? I mean, it's a, you know, it's a massive size difference with going to a three inch diagonal you know, for this, you know, essentially one IP setup. So let's check out how much the entire combo weighs. Alrighty, so let's see how much the entire combo of the IP and the diagonal will weigh. I don't even know if my scale, this little scale goes up that high, but let's check it out. Oh my goodness, guys. Look at that, 8.6 pounds. Now, I'm not sure that the Explore Scientific Diagonal weighs quite as much as this one probably doesn't. Uh, but as you can see, that's a pretty beefy setup. Alrighty guys, so as you saw, you know, five pounds for the eyepiece with the diagonal weighs about eight pounds. You know, that's pretty crazy. So is that really an issue? Well, you know, as you're seeing this clip right now, this is me uh, using the eyepiece, the, the 30 millimeter. 
with the TOA 130, so that's a five inch Apple. And if you're not familiar with the TOA series, uh, they are very well known to be a very heavy five inch Apple. I'm sure it's one of the heavier ones out there. Uh, they weigh, you know, over uh, 30 pounds, uh, like with the rings and that type of deal. And as you can see, even switching from the heavy, you know, 2.5 uh, or so pound 25 millimeter to the 30 millimeter, the scope has got, you know, balancing issues. You know, guys, this is probably a bad joke, but a lot of times when I'm at star parties, right, I, I joke that this is my grab and go eyepiece. And people probably hate me for it. So if you do, I'm sorry. <laughs> But anyway, the reason that I really say that, guys, is that this eyepiece, I think, you know, like one of the biggest downsides to it is that it's so heavy, even like with that two weight, right? I actually really would need to add another counterweight to use this, you know, properly to be well balanced. Um, and that'll be especially true with the FSQ to where, um, you know, this is, you know, like when I'm using this, usually this is like the only eyepiece that I'll use, you know, for the night usually, or like for extended periods of time, because even switching from like, you know, let's say, you know, something like, you know, a 17 millimeter, or like if you had a 13 millimeter, or if you didn't explore scientifics, if you had the 14 millimeter, right? Which what I'd consider to be the, you know, like a good step uh, up in power. I mean, you'd have to rebalance the scope very severely uh, with the TOA and especially with the FSQ. I mean, we're talking about adding and subtracting counter rates. So really, it's not really something that you're going to be doing throughout the night. You know, if you have a setup, you know, that's uh, this heavy, realistically, it's kind of like a one trick pony. You know, you set up the scope, you balance it well, and you're using this eyepiece the entire night. Now, why would you want to do that, you'd ask? Well, so um, there's this cool tool. It's called Astronomy Tools. I'm posting in a little uh, screen capture of it right now. Um, as you can see, so this is a field of view of uh, M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. And so it includes uh, the 21 millimeter Ethos, uh, which is the widest, you know, 100 degree that Televi makes, the 25 millimeter Explorer Scientific, and the 30 millimeter <clears throat> Explorer Scientific 3 inch. As you can see, in the TOA 130, right? Um, you are getting a substantially wider field of view. So if we do a, a little bit of quick math, guys, um, if you look at the Ethos 21 millimeter and uh, compare it to the you know 30 millimeter three inch Explore Scientific, uh, the three inch Explore Scientific gives you in the TOA 130 about a three degree field of view. The Ethos 21 millimeter would give you about a two degree field of view. So you're getting a full degree wider of a field of view. And as you can see, you know, from the, you know, image that we have here, the Ethos 21 millimeter does fit the Andromeda Galaxy, uh, you know, just barely in the field of view. I personally, when I'm observing, um, I like to have some context in a lot of cases, especially with my low power eye piece so i really do prefer the view of you know andromeda with the wider you know kind of um uh, field of the 30 millimeter in the 2a130 let's say um and actually how much wider if we do a little bit of quick math it comes out to be about 32 uh, percent wider so i consider to be that to be you know very significant and then just in case uh you know it's not clear as you can see the outer white ring in the uh, astronomy tools image is the field of view that i get with the fsq 106 and the 30 millimeter i mean so it's super wide if i remember correctly it's about 5.5 degrees. I mean, absolutely massive field of view. Um, the exit pupil, actually, interestingly enough, is still only at six millimeters, so pretty wide, but most people should, you know, be able to take in that whole uh, exit pupil. So, I mean, realistically, guys, like, you know, something like the FSQ and this 30 millimeter is absolutely the ultimate wide field experience that you could get. Okay, so we've kind of, you know, talked about the main advantage, so the field, the massive wide field of view that you get with this. Uh, so how does it compare, you know, optically to like, you know, smaller brothers uh, or like the Ethos line? Um, guys, uh, the biggest, you know, thing that I'll say is that the contrast and the sharpness on this eyepiece for what it is for a low power, you know, wide field of view eyepiece, it's good. I mean, does it uh, like, you know, something like an ortho? No. Uh, it does suffer some coma, I'd say probably even a little bit more more than it's you know like cousins so basically if you're not familiar coma is where you know stars kind of start to look kind of more like uh comets 
in the outer field of view, the further out usually you get, the, you know, the worse the effect. I'd say that it starts to, you kind of start to see that in the outer 30% of the field of view with this one. Really though, like for me, um, doesn't really bother me too terribly much with you know something like an ultra super wide field of view eyepiece because typically you know most of the time you know that's just like the periphery vision especially on the 100 degree field of view eyepiece and the field of views that i get with especially with f are so wide to where you know i mean most objects will fit easily and kind of like in the more central portion of the field of view so is it perfect no the ethos are certainly better but i'll you know i mean you can't get an ethos that's you know like this good okay guys so we've kind of covered you know like the basics of the ip so how is it to actually observe with this guy well so we are going to uh take off the cap here and kind of get back to the eye cup here <laughs> so the reason that this eye cup is removed and this is kind of true about a lot of the 100 degree field of view ips but especially with this one is because to in order for me to see that entire 100 degree field of view uh all at the same time um, even with having the eye cup on there, it kind of makes a difference to where my face can literally not get close enough to the eyepiece. So with the eye cup, you know, totally removed, I can get close enough to see the entire field of view. But just like I've mentioned, if you've watched any of my other videos about the 100 degree field of view eyepiece, whether it's the Ethos or the other Explorer Scientifics, I mean, guys, you have to be like literally glued to the, you know, to, I mean, like I'm literally like this with the eyepiece to see, you know, the entire field of view. Now, I know that some people, you know, like uh, I see this at star parties all the time. Um, I'm not going to lie, kind of bothers me. <laughs> all right. So they buy their 100 degree field of view eyepiece, right? They have their eye cup up or whatever, right? And then, you know, like some people, they kind of like like to, you know, move their head around and see different, you know, um, portions of the field of view. Guys, to me, logically, like if you kind of think about it, you, all you're seeing at the same time, if you do that, is like, you know, like maybe 60 degrees or so. So it's the same thing as using a 60 degree field of view eyepiece, if you think about it logically, right? And then just moving the scope around with, you know, your hand controller, like the mount around, I mean, you know. So just food for thought, if you're paying for a 100 degrees field of view, to me, you should be seeing the whole 100 degrees at the same time. Okay, and then so getting back to the whole filter aspect, guys, so I'd say that this, you know, be, the way it's kind of a big downside, again, if you're using this as your only eyepiece, you know, it's easily overcome though, right? Uh, I'd say the biggest downside to, um, you know, the three inch form factor is that I personally have not been able to find uh, light pollution filters. So while this is a great star cluster eyepiece, this is a great uh, galaxy eyepiece. Uh, for some nebula, you really do want, like whether it's an H beta filter, an O3 filter, or something like that. And, you know, obviously, you know, a two inch won't really work because then you're, you're kind of not... Um, get in the entire field of view even if you were able to somehow macgyver it on there one thing that i have tried and it works you know reasonably well especially you know like if you put something over your head to block all the light from around you is you can put a two inch filter right even in its cell kind of over the top of the lens right and you can you know kind of use it that way um, it is a little bit tricky though, because I, like I said, the eye relief is really tight on this. So if you want to be able to see the whole hundred degrees, it kind of doesn't really work if the um, filters in the cell. What I'm actually planning on doing, I haven't really done this yet. I'll, I'll do it for the summer for sure. Is I'm actually going to take out uh, the actual filter, like you know, the actual filter out of the cell, and I'm going to make it. You know, somehow I haven't really thought about how maybe like. Uh, tape it or I don't know so somehow I'm actually going to just put it straight on there so that essentially it doesn't really get in my way at all so there you know like that's a pretty good way around it because a two inch filter easily covers the top island stream alrighty guys so anyway to sum this uh, thing up and kind of bring the ship home is the 30 millimeter explorer scientific eyepiece worth uh, you know over a thousand dollar price tag and especially with the three inch diagonal I have to get it's definitely you know well over a thousand bucks probably over 1500 bucks. I haven't really checked the latest pricing on them. 
um, guys, if you're into those ultra wide field views, uh, for me personally, it is. I really, I mean, the reason that I have this is because um, a lot of times when I go to star parties, right, I'll have my big dub, the 24 inch setup along with, uh, you know, like currently I'm gonna be using the FSQ setup alongside with the, so the DAW, you know, I'm getting those, you know, kind of high power, uh, deep sky views to where with the 30 millimeter, I could get that, you know, super like ultra wide field of view eyepiece. Alrighty guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions, comments or anything like that, leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing for all my regular viewers. Thank you for viewing and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.